Hi, I'm Jonah, and this is a Learn to Play tutorial for the Sioux Spirit Dance Song. This is a very earthy song, a real grounding song. It's perfect for Earth Day, good time to kind of get back to our roots. It's also a really simple song, which I appreciate in that it gives a lot of space for experimenting with breath and how we can use our breath to create dynamics in our songs, even really simple ones. And so as we move through this tutorial, I'll be talking about that. Now I'm going to be playing this on a signature series quilted maple flute in the key of F sharp. And this is a, one of the Nature's Art series flutes and it has this beautiful purling in the wood. It's just spectacular. And it's a one inch bore, which gives it a really rich, deep tone on the low notes and a really sweet tone on the high notes. So it creates a real dynamic flute. Now that said, you can play this song on any flute or any native flute in, in any key and it'll sound really sweet. In the high tone flutes you might play it a little faster, uh, it has kind of an upbeat feel to it, where in the low tone flutes it plays slower and has a real meditative side to it. So now I'll play it through once and then we'll move into the tutorial. Now the simplest way that I find to learn a song is to work through it phrase by phrase. And phrases are the sections that build the song in a very similar way to how sentences build a story. A simple way of determining phrases is essentially that each time you pause to take a breath, you've completed a phrase. Now in the sheet music, I note the phrases with these numbers with lines through them. Phrase one, two, three, and so on. As we walk through the song phrase by phrase, I'll note anything that's unusual or particularly challenging in a phrase, and then I'll play it through at a really slow tempo. And at that point, what I'd suggest is pausing the video and playing through that phrase until you can move through the melody and the rhythm pretty smoothly at that tempo. And once we've worked through the whole song, I'd suggest going back to the beginning of the song and working through each phrase again. And each time you do that, you'll memorize the melody and the rhythm a little bit more, get a little more comfortable with the song, and then you can start bringing it up to tempo. So now let's walk through the song phrase by phrase. This is the first phrase of the Sioux Spirit Dance song, and it's also the most rhythmically complex phrase because it has this dotted eighth note going to a sixteenth note followed by a half note. And the rhythm of that is you're, you're playing this you're playing the quarter note here, and then you move into this dotted eighth note, which is three quarters of a beat, and then you do a quick change of notes down one note, one hole, and you play this sixteenth note, and then you tongue that note again and play the same note in the half in two beats in the half note. So it looks a little more complex on paper than it is in practice, and what that sounds like is. Da, 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 da. So essentially it just has this quick da, da for the change of notes into that half note.
Phrase two is essentially the same thing as phrase one. The only difference is that the rhythm is a little different right here at this portion, where it's a more complex in phrase one, where we have this dotted eighth note to a sixteenth note. In phrase two, we have a quarter note. So in phrase one, the dotted eighth note gets three quarters of a beat, and the sixteenth note gets a quarter of a beat. So if you add those together, you have one beat. And in phrase two, instead of having the beat separated, we have the single beat played on this note. Phrase three is a very simple phrase, and it has a very simple rhythm to it. And so you're going to be using your breath and the inflections in your breath in order to make this phrase more interesting. And the way you do that is you put more pressure into the flute to create some intensity in the note, and then you back that off in order to create more ease. And you can play that back and forth as you move through the phrase in order to create some dynamics within it. And in the second example of this phrase, I'll give an example of what I mean by, by that. And as you move through the song and learn the song and how the phrases relate to each other, you'll be able to change how you create your inflections and dyna the dynamics in your inflections in each phrase according to the next phrase as well. So like in this phrase, I would create more ease in the beginning and a little more intensity in the end because the next phrase is also has some more intensity to it. And using the inflections in your breath to accentuate that is going to make this song more interesting and is going to really add a lot to any of the songs that you're playing, a lot more dynamics and a lot more feeling into the songs. really flowing that pressure of the breath back and forth there. Phrases four and five are exactly the same, so I'm going to combine them here. In phrase four and five are a crescendo in the song where you have this really interesting melody. You have the quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, half note, eighth note, eighth note, rest, and then boom, right back into that same melody in phrase five. And it's especially interesting coming off of such a simple phrase like phrase three, where it's just very simple notes, very simple m rhythm, and into this kind of dynamic rhythm melody with this, with this kind of, you hit this pause, this rest, boom, then you move into it again. And it creates a lot of, it has, to me, it has a lot of intensity to it. So I think it should be played that way. So again, using your breath to create dynamics within this, create that intensity, where at the beginning of the phrase, you start off a little bit backed off on the breath, not really soft, but a little more like a medium intensity, and then building until you hit that last eighth note where you hit it really intensely, and then it, it really emphasizes that note, especially with that pause right afterwards, that rest. So it's like this boom, rest. And playing it that way, really emphasizes that crescendo of the song, it really emphasizes those two phrases. Uh, and as you move into the next phrase, it kind of has this more simple feel about it again, just in the melody of the phrase, it can't help it. So it really creates that crescendo. create kind of an intensity to it with more pressure. You 
the beginning's a little backed off and then the intensity with the pressure. On one note, it would sound like this. So you're using your, the pressure of the air to change the, the intensity or the smoothness of the sound, the feel of the sound. Phrases six and seven are exactly the same, so I'll combine them here. They're also almost exactly the same as phrase three. Now they're a very simple set of notes. It's only two notes in each phrase, and the rhythm is extremely simple as well, where you just have these quarter notes followed by these half notes. So again here, using your breath to create dynamics, and to me, this is a soft part of the song. You just came off of a crescendo and you're moving into a soft part of the song. And so I'd suggest using a real light breath, real soft breath pressure to really emphasize the softness of this part of the song. Phrases eight and nine together are another high point in the song, and they're coming off of phrases six and seven, which are a real soft, easy part of the song. And so then these are together are kind of another crescendo of the song. Now in phrase eight, the phrase starts on the root note or the low note of the flute, and then it jumps up to a higher note and then works its way back down again. And so to me, the inflections start off kind of light and then move up into more intensity and then move back down as you move towards this half note. In phrase nine, we're still in this high point of the song, and we start the phrase on, an, on a higher note, and then we, throughout the whole phrase, we work our way back down to, again, to the root note. And it's a very long phrase, so you'll want to take a big breath at the beginning of this phrase in order to be able to make it through all in one breath. And as far as inflections, I would put a somewhat more intensity at the beginning of the phrase and then slowly moving down and backing off your breath pressure as you move into these root notes at the end of the phrase. And we're moving into the phrases 10 and 11, which are the same as phrases 6 and 7, those real simple, soft phrases, the, that real kind of light, soft part of the song that mixes with these more intense Com more complex parts of the song. Phrases 10 and 11 are exactly the same as phrases 6 and 7, where you are at this low part of the song or the soft part of the song following one of the high points of the songs or a crescendo in the song. And so my suggestion would be to play this with a real light breath, a real light intensity to it, and really emphasize that softness.
phrases 12 and 13 are exactly the same, so I'll combine them here. And I'll also add in phrase 14 because it's such a simple phrase in the final phrase of the song. Now phrases 12 and 13 are almost exactly the same as phrases 4 and 5. The main difference is that the rhythm is switched up. It's the same notes, but the rhythm is switched up. In 12 and 13, you have eighth note, eighth note, quarter note, where in 4 and 5, it's quarter note, eighth note, eighth note. And I suggest using your inflections like you did in 4 and 5, where the beginning of the phrase has a medium intensity to the inflection, and then you're building that. And so you hit that last eighth note, followed by the rest, to really emphasize it. And then you're, boom, you're into that next phrase that's exactly the same. And you're emphasizing that as well at the end by moving with through the phrase, creating more intensity, and hitting that last note and then moving on into that rest, which really emphasizes that last phrase. And then boom, you hit that final low note and that holds for four beats and that fin finishes the song.